What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Hall of Justice. Of course, I am Tony, aka Son of the Bat, from the Super Friends podcast. And today is the 2nd of October, so we have a lot of books to get through, and I'm going to try to get them out to you and show them to you a little bit quicker than I've been doing. I've been having about 30 minute videos, so let's see if we can condense this and get right to it. But before I start, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know that I'm always working with San Diego Comics. So if you're in San Diego, make sure you stop by where they have all brand new issues as well as all trade paperbacks for 15% off and anything that is a back issue under $10 is 25% off. So hit them up. They have a lot of great books. Uh, they're one of San Diego's oldest comic book shops. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're just really great. So stop, stop on by if you guys are in town. But starting off, I wanted to go ahead and share these two. There's really nothing significant to them because they are completely blank. And the reason I picked these up is because as you can see down here, it says 24 hour comics day. And so that's done once a year. And what it's for is basically allowing artists, writers to come together for 24 hours in one, one location. There's a bunch of them throughout the world and they create a comic book within 24 hours. And so I got a Batman and Wonder Woman. The reason I got these is because I figured that for the next 18 years, I can take these to my comic cons, whether it's San Diego Comic Con, whether it's uh, Ontario Comic Revolution, uh, WonderCon, whatever, and get my favorite artists to do one panel uh, and fill up each page for the next 18 years. Basically, I have a, a, a <laughs> my firstborn child coming in November, and I thought it'd be a pretty neat idea to have a story done about how Wonder Woman or how Batman basically looked after mom and dad, uh, me and my wife, and the baby before they were born, while they were growing up, elementary, middle school, and high school, and basically all the way up until they graduated where they're going to be on their own now, figuring out their own thing. So it's kind of a personal project, and I'll let you guys in on it. I don't want to, you know, give too much away because obviously it's going to be a big project and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, if you guys are interested in creating your own stories or putting something together, these are really, really cool. They're super cheap. They're only three bucks each, but I picked up these two. And then we had Action Comics number 1003. Now, this is the, the book that is following the Ro, uh, Rogel Czar and the, um, the Phantom Zone. A situation where Earth is in the Phantom Zone. So it's been a pretty good read. This right here obviously is one of the variants. And then I also got, oh, I love this one so much, the Francesco Mattina Deathstroke. And this is number 36 variant. And this this is in Arkham. So we have the Joker right here. We have a couple of the main rogues for Batman and their beautiful, beautiful cover. Your your comic shop should have plenty of them. I think that they were they were highly ordered. So nothing in regards to spec there, but just a beautiful cover. And then Justice League, we have number nine. All I picked up was the variant. Of course, this is Jim Lee's cover. We got the Flash right there. And of course, there is the one for 100 that's going to be probably around ratio in regards to cost. Um, I know the Joker one a lot of people were looking for. This one I was super excited for because, of course, Flash is my favorite. So finally got that in on issue nine. And as always, we have another Harley cover done by Frank Cho. This is issue number 51. Definitely, definitely loving his covers. He has not disappointed. And I'm going to be bouncing around a little bit. This right here, we have Iron Man number four. I didn't get the variant for this, but we are moving forward with issue number four. Nothing too crazy with the series so far, at least in my opinion. But the artwork has been great. And then we also have a number one from Marvel. We have Shatterstar. That, of course, uh, being an X-Men character, uh, X-Men related character. Uh, created by Rob Liefeld, which there is a variant of his out there. So if you guys find that, definitely pick it up. We also have another first issue with Typhoid Fever, Spider-Man number one. So we have Typhoid Mary in the mix. There's a couple of one shots. This is the first issue. This is the regular cover. And of course, there are a couple variants. An IDW published book that I didn't know I was going to be interested in until I heard about it is Star Wars Adventures Tales from Vader's Castle. So this is going to be the first origin story of Darth Vader's Castle, and I believe it deals with the Rogue One team from the cartoon. So really excited to read this. Haven't opened it up yet. But in regards to spec, it does have the origin of Vader's Castle in this. So definitely pick that up if, if that's what you're looking for in regards to spec. And then we also have Justice League, well, Wonder Woman, Justice League Dark, The Witching Hour, Issue 1. So a lot of craziness going on here. 
love this cover right here. This, oh my gosh, I have too much of a reflection. There we go. This cover B is fantastic. I know a lot of people picked it up. If you guys are looking to get it, your local comic shop should have them, hopefully. If not, definitely you're going to have to order it now online. So good luck with that. But that is the Witching Hour number one. And then going back to Marvel, we do have the first black issue of X-Men. And that is with Magneto. So there were two covers for this, as well as a Virgin variant of this J. Scott Campbell, which, fortunately enough, the regular cover is J. Scott Campbell. So it's going to be pretty easy to pick up. You should be able to find it anywhere. Any, any comic shop should have this one since it is cover A. The cover B, I forgot the name of the artist, but they did basically a mug shot for Magneto, which was actually not too bad. I was kind of surprised. And then cover C is going to be a 1 for 100 variant. And it's a J. Scott Campbell Virgin variant of the original. So if that's what you're looking for, it's going to be a little bit more pricey. But I'm just happy that J. Scott's doing the regular cover because his stuff usually goes for a lot. And having him on a regular cover makes it definitely readily available for uh, customers. So that one's a good one to look out for. And then this week we also got reintroduced to the What If series. And so this is What If Flash Thompson Turned Into Spider-Man. And for those of you who have been reading, you know, Venom and Venom Inc. and basically Spider-Man all the way up until 800, you know that he was, Flash Thompson was Venom for a little while, uh, uh, Agent Venom. And this is uh, What If. And to be honest, this isn't the first What If of Flash Tom Thompson being Spider-Man. There was a What If back in the day when the, the first volume came out that kind of touched on this as well. So this is, this is something to look at, see if the story's good. I haven't read it yet. But I know that the first one, uh, uh, part of the first What If series, is definitely the one to look for. So see if you can find it at your local comic shop. And then the other What If that we got this week is for X-Men. And I haven't read up on this one exactly, but it has, you know, it has Domino and Cable in it. So I'm interested to see what direction this goes in. And then kind of wrapping up the edge of Spider-Geddon uh, situation and now going into Spider-Geddon as of last week with issue zero, we have the Superior Octopus issue number one. So we know that this is Otto Octavius taking on this role as a hero now. So I'm pretty interested to see where this goes, especially since uh, Spider-Geddon Zero had him as Spider-Man, the Superior Spider-Man, and in costume. So I want to see what the situation with this is. Looks pretty good. And then moving over to Image. And again, like I said, we're going to be bouncing around a little bit. We have right here, we have Spawn number 290. One of the things that you'll notice is that the lettering for the Spawn title is actually the original lettering. So when you've been picking up Spawn titles recently, it's got a more modern look. Uh, the font looks different, but they're going back to the original Spawn uh, font, which I really like. And this is amazing because it is Francesco Mattina again. He's just He's been at it for a bunch of different publishers, and he... He never fails. This one right here is basically a reprint of, I think, issue 20 or 289 or 288. I can't remember, but it's basically like a black and white ink variant, but they're calling it cover B, I believe, or C. So I wasn't too happy about it. I still picked it up because I am picking up the variants for Spawn, just waiting for issue 300 to come along. And then moving over to DC or back over to DC to be more precise we have Nightwing um we have him right now dealing with a head injury he got shot in the head in the last Batman issue which we had a new issue this week 56 and I'll get it I'll show you that one in a little bit but this is kind of dealing with that situation and kind of where he goes from here and we have cover B which is a John Boy Myers uh, variant and he, he's got he's got some awesome clean clean lines on his book so if you can find those they should both be at cover price and then moving back over to Image, we have The Magic Order, which has been a fantastic book, and I cannot wait for this series to become a TV show on Netflix, which is kind of the whole purpose of it. I believe it got picked up on Netflix before the comic even came out, or it was announced that it was getting picked up. So I'm really excited for this. It's been a really good read. It's like an adult Harry Potter. A lot of people have been uh, basically stating it that way, and I really, really agree with them. So it's a, it's a good book. The cover B for it, uh, it's just a black and white, and then cover C, I think, is a 1 for 25 uh, ratio variant, so not too hard to find. And then we have the champions going into Weird World. And, of course, this all kind of ties into the whole uh, Infinity War, Infinity Warp situation. But as we can see here, it's almost like a Dungeons & Dragons type 
situation. It looks pretty interesting. I've been picking up champions just to see where these stories have been going, and I've been happy with it. So that's champions number 25. And then we also have a number one for a mini, which also ties into Infinity Wars, and that's Sleepwalker number one. I guess he awakens after the fact that Gamora basically has folded the universe in half. He exists, and he's trying to make sense of all of it and try to bring it back to normal. So it is a two-issue miniseries. I'm really excited for this one to see exactly what direction it goes in. And then bouncing back over to DC, oh, I was excited for Batman this week because we had two amazing covers. Cover A is actually a foil cover, and I don't know if you can tell because it is in a bag, but it is one shiny cover, and this is Tony Daniels doing cover A, so you should be able to find tons of these because it is a regular cover. And then we have cover B, again, by the master himself, Francesco Mattina. It's a much darker, which we know Mattina doing darker covers, of course, but if you can get both at cover price, good on you because these are amazing. Both of them are fantastic books to have. And then bouncing back over to Marvel, we have Death of the Inhumans. This is issue four. I have never been an Inhumans fan up until Donny Cates got on this and started killing them off like crazy. And it's just got you glued to each page. So it's been a fantastic read. This is issue number four. And then we also have Cosmic Ghost Rider on issue four as well. There were three covers to this. There was a Battle Lines variant, which a lot of people loved. I wasn't a big fan because I'm not as much of a fan of the original Ghost Rider as I am of Cosmic. Just being 100% honest, it's a beautiful cover, though. And I know that my shop, again, San Diego Comics, they ordered a ton. So if you guys are in town and you want to pick up the, the Battle Lines variant, definitely stop by because they have it there. Uh, but this right here is the Cosmic Ghost Rider. Another thing about the Battle Line variants, they're very similar to DC's semi-version variants that they've been coming out with. So that's the thing that they're going to be doing all month. If you're looking for something that is similar to a Virgin variant, I would pick up those Battle Lines. And that's my little Corgi, and he's agreeing with me. Next up, and moving back over to DC, we have Adventures of the Super Sons. And this is issue three. So... This has been a fun read. It's always been a fun read since the ongoing series, so I'm always happy to pick this up. I was excited to see it at the comic shop. I was like, I'm definitely sharing this. I'm definitely putting it in my collection because I need to complete it, like all of us do. So moving back over to Marvel. Again, we're, ba we're bouncing back and forth, back and forth. We have As Guardians of the Galaxy number two. This is cover A. There was a cover B. I don't think it was orderable. I think it was a one for 25. And it does have the Destroyer armor on it opening up, and it looks really, really cool. So this is going to touch more, I believe, on Kid Loki and what his, you know, whole deal is with being back in the universe, the regular universe, the 616 universe. Uh, it's been a good read. I was surprised with the first issue. I was really happy with it. So we have issue two now. And then again, back over to DC, just bouncing around, just zigging when you're zagging. We have the Dreaming issue two. So this has been really fun. This has been introducing me to the Sandman universe. And it's just, it's just been a great read. Anything coming out of the Sandman universe has been fantastic. And I think next week we're going to be seeing Lucifer. Uh, I'll definitely be showing you if that's actually the case, but we have the Dreaming Issue 2 out. And then we also, going back to Marvel, again, I'm all over the place. We have Doctor Strange, and this is issue number 6. Apparently, based off the last issue, there's two Doctor Strange, one on Earth, one in space. We're going to figure out and hopefully find out what the heck is going on in issue 6. There's also a uh, Battle Lines variant for this as well. That's really, really nice. And then moving over to Dark Horse. I was really, really happy with this. I had to open it up so I can share a little bit with what's going on. You have this guy trying to find his wife and his kid in this, I would, it's kind of a mix of post-apocalyptic with futuristic uh, tech design in regards to the world that he lives on, but it's got kind of an, a, a manga feel just with the action. It's very, very fast paced. This is Death Orb number one by Dark Horse. All I'm going to say is I suggest this book. I highly, I would say this is my pick of the week because this is such a good story. And it went by so quickly. I was like, I want more. I need more. So definitely pick this up if you can find it at your local comic shop. That's Death Orb by Dark Horse Comics. And then we got a couple more of these uh, independent books. The next one is Dead Rabbit number one. You basically have this assassin slash thief that retires and now is coming back out of retirement. This was actually kind of fast-paced, too. It was a little dark, 
But it's basically you, you see him, he's trying to live his life as a normal person, working almost like a greeter at Walmart, and then he comes out of retirement because he sees some crazy stuff going on. So this was a really good pickup. I can definitely see this being turned into a TV show in regards to, you know, any viewers out there that are that are speculators. I would definitely pick this up and hold on to it because I can see this being turned into something for sure. All right, and then next up from Aftershock, it's a brand new book that's coming out, issue number one. It is called The Lollipop Kids. I did a little research into it. It has something to do with some monsters. You can see there's some uh, some monster hands right there that are found in Central Park and how the kids deal with it there. So it looks pretty interesting. I picked it up, especially because it's a number one, and just letting you guys know what brand new books are coming out this week. Uh, and again, this is from Aftershock. This is Lollipop Kids, number one. And then moving over again back to image, we have Juke Joint number one. Excuse me. So this book is pretty brutal. And even before you actually get into the story, it does tell you this is not for kids. This is a very mature book. Uh, it does also give a couple of phone numbers for people that have dealt with PTSD um, any type of trauma it it gives you phone numbers just in case you can't manage it's a very very bloody book I mean as you could tell on the cover there's some crazy stuff already kind of going on uh, I don't want to share too much it's an interesting story I'm gonna stick with it uh, I believe it's just a mini series uh, but I think it takes place like during the 40s uh, 30s or 40s but um, it's it's an interesting read. I just wanted to give people a little bit of a warning. There's been a lot of people, ex you know, waiting and anticipating for this book. Um, but yeah, just kind of keep in mind, it's definitely not for kids. Um, parents are going to make their own choices, but I highly suggest not letting your little ones see this because uh, it, it is pretty brutal. Uh, so yeah, that's juke joint number one. And then last but not least, we have, again from Image, we have Aaron Boys. And so this story basically takes place in a future where there are certain jobs that are very dangerous and these errand boys are the only ones that will actually do it. They get paid very well, but they might not come out alive. So it was an interesting idea, so I definitely picked it up. And I know a lot of people are thinking that this could possibly be turned into something. I can see it being turned into a movie, to be honest. Um, the artwork is really good. There is a cover B variant. Uh, that it was orderable, so your your comic shop should be able to uh, sell one to you. If not, you'll you'll definitely have to find one online. But that's Aaron Boys by Image Comics. So, guys, that was a lot quicker than the 30, 35 minute videos I've been posting. And the reason I did that was just to kind of go through it really quick, let you guys know what's coming out, what I personally pick up each week. And if you guys have any questions or want to know what else is coming out, hit us up, leave a comment, follow us, of course, subscribe. Turn on your notifications and help this channel grow by asking questions because we want to go ahead and communicate with our viewers, with my viewers. And for those of you who have been listening to the podcast since day one, so about a year now, Javi and I are getting back together. And we never broke up or anything as friends. Uh, but basically, there was some personal stuff in regards to moving, moving back, uh, just a lot of personal things going on. I'm having a baby uh, Javi just came back from Texas so we're getting stuff rolling again to make sure that we're going to be consistent so this week we're going to have another audio episode and so if you guys uh, listen to us or if you don't we're on Google Play Music, SoundCloud, iTunes and Stitcher Radio so definitely check us out there subscribe to us and we're going to be back up and have a new episode for you guys this Friday I'm really excited to have my buddy back on and uh, just talk comics just like just like we did and how we started off with everything if you guys want to support the channel go to patreon.com slash TSF pod and for as little as a dollar a month you can be a part of these giveaways I was doing it for five bucks but a dollar a month the more we get the more stuff I can get for you guys and you guys can also pick and and suggest books that you want to see each week uh, moving forward so again that's on uh, patreon.com slash TSF pod and then also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, at TSF Pod for both. And basically any other social media you might be on, Vero or Holana, same thing. TSF Pod, you'll be able to find us there. And I don't have a giveaway this week, but I will have one next week. I'm just waiting for the books to come in, and I want to share them with you guys. I'm really excited for them. But nothing this week, unfortunately. However, if you guys do become patrons, you will be a part of the raffle for the Inhuk Lee connecting variants that they have come out with for Spider-Geddon. And that starts with zero and goes all the way up to issue six. So they're all connecting. They're beautiful covers. And once I have the full set in, I'll announce the winner. 
As always, I want to go ahead and shout out Joe June for creating the intro to this YouTube video. Uh, you can listen to him and follow him on SoundCloud by searching Vision Flow Records, and you can follow him on social media on Instagram and on Twitter at Joe June Music and at Vision Flow Records for both. So if you like his music, he's got a lot more stuff that I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy. But again, I just want to let you guys know if you're in San Diego, definitely hit up San Diego Comics. They're one of the oldest comic shops in San Diego, and they, they got some good deals for you. If you guys are looking to start up a pool list, they'll definitely help you out. And do some pre-orders through them, too, because uh, they do offer that, and that's how I can get all these books for you guys and, and let you know what's out there. So, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your week. I will catch you next Tuesday. Well, Wednesday. So, you guys take care. I'll catch you then. Later. Blow up the floor. Weapons ready for testing.